I think about him, the more I can thank him. The more I think about him, the more I can thank him. Hallelujah. My praise isn't predicated on the ability of the singers, but my ability of recognizing who my God is. Thank you, oh God. And God has done some great, marvelous, and awesome things for us. And he's worthy of the worship. He's worthy of the worship. Are there any true worshipers in the house? Are there any true wor worshipers in the house? Are there any true worshipers in the house? Hallelujah. Hey, thank you, God, for saving me. Thank you for delivering me. Thank you for setting me free. Thank you for bringing me up and bringing me out, God. I worship you, God. I worship you, God. I worship you, God. I worship you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you for being my deliverer. Thank you for being my miracle worker. Thank you for being my miracle worker. Thank you for being my miracle worker. Thank you, oh God. Because no one else could do it for me but you, oh God. And we thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, oh thank you, Lord. God is so. Now, if I do that, 
I would not. It is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. But I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. O oh, wretched man that I am who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind I myself serve the law of God. But with the flesh the law of sin. I want to focus your attention on verse 23 where I withdraw my topic. But I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. And I want to talk to you today from the thought this means war. Whether you want to fight or not, this means war. Our Father and our God, we thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your loving kindness. Thank you, God, for blessing us with wisdom to understand your word, whereby we can walk in the liberty you have spoken and desire to give unto each and every one that will yield our members unto you. God, we are emptying ourselves of our own desires to be filled with that which you have promised us, oh God. We come chasing after you today, God. God, we understand, God, that we are betwixt two roads, which one to go and which one to travel. God, we thank you. We want to pick the higher road, oh God, that leads to holiness and righteousness, leads to glory, oh Lord. So bless now, God. I step behind the cross that no flesh would glory, but to God be the glory. I ask now you bless the words of my lips, the meditation of my heart, that it would be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength, our redeemer. And we ask it in Jesus' name. And all the people said amen, amen, and amen. Just give the Lord a, a thunderous applause as you are seated in his presence. Amen. I honor the Lord. I give great deference unto him because he's worthy of the glory, worthy of the honor. He's worthy of the praise. I'm to this realization, I could not deliver myself. I could not save myself. A amen. Had it not been for the Lord, I'm so glad that grace came where disgrace was at. Pick me up and save me. Clean me up. Uh, fill me up. Uh, amen. He has his hand propping me up uh, even as I go through life right now. To my lovely wife. Amen. Praise the Lord. Our first lady. Amen. To uh, Supervisor Yuma. Amen. To uh, Elder Taylor. To all of you. Our church mother. She's out there somewhere. She went on her journey. Amen. I saw her. To God. She's on her mission. To, to God. Be the glory. Amen. Uh, to Amen. Good to see Mother and Father back. Amen. God bless you. Amen. We we thank the Lord for our visitors. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Uh, and I too want to thank each and every one of you. Amen. That was a great home going service on yesterday. Praise God. It was an awesome home going service. Praise God. Thank you for all that you did. Uh, 
every participant and, and whatever uh, means and ways that uh, God used you to, we, we certainly thank you for it. And, and I thank God, you know, good hope, you just know how to be good hope. You just know how to be good hope. And for that, we say thank you. Paul said, there's a warring in my members. Amen. How you know, have you noticed he didn't put it on the devil? Because oftentimes we want to put it on the devil, but there's a war in my members. In, in me, praise the Lord. And there's something that we fail to understand or grasp about this life we are attempting to live. Notice what he says, and we're going to look at it uh, later on, but there's four laws that he, he speaks about, amen, and there's, there's contagion. Law just simply means there's a rule of action. Nothing you can change. The law is the law. Praise the Lord. Here's the law. When you go to do good, evil is... It's all, I don't care how saved you are, how sanctified you are, how Holy Ghost filled you are, when you go to do good, evil is always present. Have you ever asked yourself, how am I thinking and why am I thinking about that? And oftentimes you want to beat yourself up. You don't understand that's a law that's in action, in place. You got to know what you can do and what you can't do. Amen. You're going to always have those struggles. You can fast for a whole week. You can get refilled every day of that week and come out and still have struggles. Why? Because there is a law in my members. Oh, <laughs> wow. Look at what he says. Sin dwelleth in me. It's already there. You don't even have to teach your child how to lie. It's already there. You don't even have to teach them, amen, how to be at odds with one another because they want, that's my toy. They got all these toys in the room and somebody come, and, and the one somebody else pick up, I want that toy. And you have to go in there and say, you got all these toys in the room. Why can't you let them? It's just in them. Amen. Praise the Lord. We have this fallen nature about ourselves. Why do you think the Bible talks about being what? Born again. You, we've got to be born again. But even after being born again, there's still a law that there's a war in my members. Even after you've been. See, that's why we can't afford to go on breaks. We struggled coming in here. We struggled. Am I going to get up and am I going to clap my hands? Or am I going to just sit here? Did you just think that that was coincidental? No, it isn't. Listen to what he says. Enter my gates with thanksgiving and my courts with praise. Then where does he, uh, where is there an allowance for us to come and sit down? And Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Come on, talk to me, somebody. We, there's a governance about our own law. This is what I don't feel like, I don't feel like shouting today. Listen to what we says. You don't know what I went through this week. Look at the war in the members. Because the Lord said, enter my gates with thanksgiving. And then, now notice, he just wants you in the door, but he wants you to go into the inner courts with praise. Some of us will not get to the inner court because we haven't praised God. We'll never get to the inner court because we have a praise God with all our strength, with all our might, with all, oh, you in church. Don't get me wrong. You're in the right place to get in, but you won't get in in the shape you're in. Uh-oh. 
the Lord is saying, I want to take you there. I, I, I'm here to take you there. I, I just want you to open. I dare you. I, come on, open your mouth. Shout unto the Lord. Ha, ha, come on, shout unto the Lord. Ha, ha, ha. And then he says, you, you know, uh, here it is. Uh, you got to have that triumphant shout. Clap unto the Lord, all ye saints, and shout unto him, amen, with the voice of what? With the voice of triumph. You see, here it is. You got to shout with the voice even before it happens. Shout unto the Lord with the voice of triumph. See, your shout, there, amen, is releasing what God wants to happen, but it doesn't happen until you release it. I shout unto you, Lord. That's why we sing that song, Don't Wait Till the Battle is Over. Shout now. <sighs> wow. Shout now. See, that's what the children of Israel did when they were walking around the walls of Jericho. Six days he told them, be quiet. Don't say nothing. In other words, I don't want you to complain about your situation. Uh-oh. We in trouble already, aren't we? Here it is. I don't want you to talk to the person in front of you. I don't want you to talk to the person behind you. I don't want you to, here we talking about thousands marching around this city. It's not a small city, amen, praise the Lord. And you got to march around it. And you're looking and you're waiting. And then you don't see none of the martyr coming out of the bricks. What, what you got me doing here, Lord? Have you ever said, Lord, Lord, what, what am I doing? See, because we are always result driven. And if we don't see results, I, 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 ain't, I ain't walk around here for nothing. What is going on? Hello. You can't look for results. When you're looking for results, God is expecting obedience. Your results, he's looking for obedience. A amen. Praise the Lord. I just want you to walk. And then on the seventh day, let's go, look, look at what he said on the seventh day. Now I want you to shout. Now I want you to lift up your voice. And notice the walls did not come down until after they shouted unto the Lord. Now, when you really look at the story and see how miraculous it was, amen, it's almost like the walls just collapsed. They didn't fall on Israel who was outside, amen. They just fell down. God will bring some things down when we learn how to enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Amen. Praise the Lord. But there's another law in my members telling me, sit here and shut up. Uh, Notice what he said. That he has another law. The Lord has a law that if ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. Some of us, amen, some things you trying to work for, God will give it to you if you be obedient. If ye be willing, and who would have thought this praise could release such a blessing. Thank you, O oh God. Praise can release what eyes have not seen, nor ear heard, neither has it entered the heart of man. The things God has prepared and is in store for us, all we have to do is learn. Uh, hello, y'all not this quiet in a football game. Y'all not this quiet at a track meet. basketball. You let your little Johnny be out there playing. He, he only hit one. Ah, he only hit one one shot the whole game. And you falling out. Oh, you better like Michael. No, he's not. He just hit one shot. And that same little fella will come here and do just what you're doing. He'll sit next to you. And he's watching you. Well, 
And mama and daddy ain't going to get up. Ain't no need to be. Uh, hello. Oh. Mm. Verse 21. I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. Now, you have to go back and look at verse 20 to find out why evil is present. All right. Can you pull that? But sin that dwelleth in me. If you don't acknowledge that sin dwells in you, come on. And that's, that, 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 that's, a, that, that's a hard pill to swallow. To think that, you know, sin well, oh, oh yeah, yeah. We have a fallen nature. Amen. We curse folks out. We just don't tell them. Cause in your mind, you done went up and down, and you, you, hello. That's why God says, "I know your thoughts." What? Afar off. Oh no, you didn't curse him out, but I heard what you said. I heard what you said. And here's the problem. You've got sin dwelling in you and you don't know how to deal and you don't want to deal with it. And it's a token for us to come to church. We stroke ourselves because we come to church. And we deem that all is well, and all is all right when it's not. When you come to church with a hunger and a thirst, notice what he says, uh, they that hunger and thirst after righteousness, they the ones that shall be filled. Hello, I'm not coming to church to see what you wore, what you going to sing, how you going to shout. I got some things I'm putting before God because I got to get it worked out on this side. Thank you, oh God. I come, God, because I need deliverance. I don't care how long I can preach. I don't care how well I can sing. I need deliverance. Amen. I need deliverance. A amen. Pray. And you got to tell yourself, I need deliverance. Thank you, oh God. I I'm not coming in as though I have made. That's what Paul was saying. I'm not coming as you as I've already attained. I haven't obtained this, amen. Praise the Lord. I'm still working on this thing. Why? Because when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. Now, this is good because God does deliver us this he said, create in me what? And renew a right spirit. Create in me, God, a clean heart. God to do that. And renew a right spirit. So let, let, let's just look at this because the, uh, the Greek for right would be constant. All right? I'm not going to give you the Greek word for it because you ain't going to know it anyway. I just give you the meaning. All right. Where it says right spirit. Notice if you go to the word, it's a little s. So it's not talking about the Holy Spirit. So create it and, and, and give me a right spirit. Give me a constant spirit. So in other words, he's saying every day, all day long, I'm living this way. Our problem is we vacillate. We're one way at church, another way at home, another way at, at the job, another way when we are kicking it with our friends, another way with this condition, another way with that condition. And what, what is happening, we don't have the right spirit. 
Why? Because we're not constantly seeking to be righteous and holy, and this is what he desires to do. You created in me a clean heart, but now I need that constant spirit. Now, who's got to work on that spirit? I got to work on it. I got to be this way from the rising of the sun to the going down of the sun. You see what it means? There's a war going on, and it's not the enemy. There's a war with me. And notice he says, there's a war in my members. Ah, I delight in the law of God after the inward man. When he talks about the law of God, the word of God, the law of God is the word of God. Praise the Lord. Do we really delight in the word of the Lord? You can't delight in something you don't read. You can't delight in something that you don't study. Uh, there's got to be evidence that you delight in it. You have to, it's something when you go and you read uh, first book of Psalms, I mean, first chapter. I know there's five books in Psalms. So it's going to give you a little, five books. So y'all quit saying in the 20th book of Psalms. No, no, there's only five books <laughs> in Psalms. It's divided that way. Uh, there's 150 chapters, but there's only five books. Okay, you know, where, where is he going with that? Well, I'm, that that's important to know. Because when you get theologian, you're talking about, let's turn to the 20th chapter of Psalms. You're like, nah, 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 nah. Look at Psalms 1. The first chapter in Psalms. All right. What time is it? I know y'all looking if I don't. Psalms 1. Notice, he's starting off the book of Psalms, and he's setting the groundwork. He's setting the foundation for everything else to be built on. Amen. Problem with Christianity today, we don't have a foundation. We don't have a found. Yes, we got a lot of things we know, but we haven't really shored up the foundation. So David would say, before we go anywhere else, and I know that uh, David wasn't the only one that wrote, uh, you know, different chapters in the book of Psalms. He said, but let's get it right. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of the sinner, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is where? In the law of the Lord. And in his law doth he what? Meditate when? Day and night. Wow. We coming up a little short, aren't we? Blessed is the man. Oftentimes we want to, Lord, I want to be blessed. He said, I told you how to be blessed. Your being blessed doesn't mean you're coming and asking me. Your being blessed is do what I told you to do. Delight in my law. And then meditate on it what? Day and night. <laughs> See, We've got this uh, uh, Eastern understanding of what meditate means. They say emptying. No, meditation means that you're filling yourself up with what is necessary. <laughs> Did you get that? Because you hear a lot of people, you just need to empty yourself out of all those bad, bad vibes. I don't care how much you think about it. There's a law in my members that even after I try to empty myself out of it, when I go to do good, hey, evil is always present. No, I need something that's going to combat that evil when it comes up, when it shows up, when it presents itself. I need to know. Hello, that's why Jesus said when the enemy tempted him, it is written. But when you don't know what's written, oh, my goodness. 
And when he comes up, ain't no time for you to start having a Bible study. Just, can you hold on right there? I, I know the Bible says, so. no, 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 ain't no time for a Bible study. You got to know it and know it now. Thank you, Lord. You got to be able like the it is written. Amen. And the, the thing about it is, God will bring, notice what he says, he brings what? All things to what? to your remembrance. He'll bring all things to your remembrance. Amen. But if nothing is there, he can't bring it back. If the well is empty, you don't get no water. If there's no, uh -uh, no, 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 no. Think about the time that we waste on ungodly things. Come on. I, I, I just want you to think about it. Think about all the endless hours we spend on ungodly things when we should be meditating on the word of God day and night and you know what our children should be able to do it as well amen they can rap songs that's like and they can rap another one right after another one, and right after another and they couldn't quote the 23rd Psalms if you wanted them to Ah, Whew, it's rough in here today. This is what's needed, amen. Because God is sending people into the church. God wants to use us to help bring deliverance. And don't get me wrong, because there's things that come to distract. Uh, and in his law, he meditates day and night. Now notice what he says. And he shall be. <laughs> Look how definite he says. Ain't no if, ands, or buts about it. If you learn how to discipline yourself in meditating on the, the word of the Lord, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth fruit in his season, his leaf also shall not wither. Look at the preservation that the Lord has for us. If we just learn how to meditate on the word of the Lord day and night. Hello. The law of the Lord is his word. We have it. What are we doing with it? We have it. What are we doing with it? All we say. Hey, hello. Let me say this. Don't just read it, because that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says, study to show thyself approved. Rightly dividing. Now, I know you got to read it to study it, but a lot of us just read it to say, well, I read the word. That's not what he's saying. He says, study to show thyself approved. Thank you, O oh God. And here it is. Quit just Taking your Bible, we can't even do that anymore. That's where the Lord wanted. No, 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 no. Know what you're struggling with. Know what's at you. Know what's pulling at you. Know what's speaking the loudest at you. Then you learn how to go to the Word and find out what the Word of the Lord says about what you are going through and then let the Lord speak to you because then you can go to God and say, it is written, God. This is what you said about this uh, and I'm struggling with this right now, God. And God, I'm grabbing a hold to it, oh Lord. And I'm not let go. You're going to have to tell yourself, this means war. I'm talking about war for me. I'm warring on this because because there's there so many things that's pulling at us. It, it's not that. How many got things pulling at you? You got a lot of things pulling at you. Amen. Just be truthful. But there's a lot of things pulling at you. If it ain't your family, it's your job. If it ain't your job, it's your health. If it ain't your health, it's your own mind. All these things are pulling at us. Amen. And when they pull at us, they distract us. There's no way you can meditate on the word with all this that's pulling at you. 
You're going to have to be intentional in going in. You're going to have to be in. Hello. You might not have, you, you can, maybe you can only go in for 10 minutes. Maybe you can only go in for 15 minutes. Maybe you can only go in. But you know what? I'm intentional in going in. I'm shutting out everything, amen, and I'm meditating, and I am communicating with God. Why? Because there's a war in my members. Truth be told, I am my own worst enemy. I am my own worst enemy. Because I was the last one I was talking to before I did what I did. I was the last one I talked to when I said what I said I wasn't going to say. I was the last one that I talked to before I looked at what I said I wasn't going to look at. Why you look at? Go ahead and look. God. You, you're having problems in your marriage. And you know you go by the, the same, you know, you, you normally go by Starbucks. But now you're going by the baristas. Ain't, ain't that real talk? The real talk say, go by the stand. The Lord said, you better go back to Starbucks. And you're telling yourself, well, you know what? To go to Starbucks, uh, uh, you, you know, the traffic is kind of backed up at this time in the morning. See, we, yeah, that's right. We begin to rationalize and tell ourselves why we can just go to the stand and get it quick. And no, 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 no. You know it's not the coffee. You know it really isn't the coffee. Here it is. He's using the coffee, amen, because there's a war in your members. There's a, hello, you got to be wise. The enemy is cunning. Even the Bible says that the enemy is subtle and he's subtle, amen. Praise the Lord. He knows how to get at us and make us feel like it's all right. I told you they had better coffee than Starbucks. And the next morning, guess where you're going? And the next morning, guess where you're going? And the next morning, guess, you know what happened? Now you got a kink in your armor. Because whereas, whereas you were waking up thinking about the Lord, now you're waking up thinking about, I'm going by the coffee stand. Hello? I, I just used that. Amen. You build your own scenario. Because here it is, we all have our struggles, and then what we do, we do things, amen, to, to, to uh, 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 strengthen our struggles when we ought to be strengthening ourselves to combat our struggle. You're only weak because you want to be weak. I know that. How do I know that? Because he says, I'm able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before his presence with an exceeding joy to the all wise God be glory majesty and see you know what that does not sound like weakness praise the Lord weakness is me rationalized going by the coffee stand thank you oh God help us oh Lord thank you Lord he says if you go by Starbucks, you'll be like a river, <laughs> uh, a water, and you'll bring forth your fruit in its season. It's all predicated on our obedience. His leaf also shall not wither. In other words, it's going to be such an abundance that everything that is attached to you prospers. Thank you, O oh God. And whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Now here it is. The ungodly are not so. 
He did not say the sinner. He said the ungodly. Wow. We can be over here and be ungodly. <laughs> Sinners, he knows what they are all about. It's us that's professing to be Christians. And we're not. And if you're not godly, then we must be ungodly. We just wear the clothes. Uh-oh. Notice what he says. The ungodly, therefore the ungodly shall not stand in judgment nor sinners. Notice, he puts a distinction between the ungodly and the sinner. So he's letting us know because a lot of times we don't put ourselves as an ungodly. That's still people out there. No, 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 no. Check it again. If my people which are called by my name would humble themselves and pray, turn from their wicked ways uh, and seek my face, uh, turn from their what? Turn from what? That wicked ways, hello, God is letting us know we can be, uh, and we get wicked. My people called by my name, if they humble themselves. So you belong to God, you're called by God, but we got wickedness about it. Ah, wow. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous but the way of the ungodly. Did you see this? See, he's yet putting a distinction, amen, between the uh, ungodly and the sinner. And this is what we have to understand. You have to ask yourself, am I godly or am I ungodly? It doesn't matter what you say, it's how you live it. It doesn't matter what you say, it's how we're living it. Amen. I'll be honest, it's a struggle living godly. How do I know that? Because he has to keep it. <laughs> if we could do it on our own accord, we wouldn't need him to keep us. If we could do it on our own accord, we wouldn't need him to deliver us. If we could do it on our own accord, uh, we wouldn't need him to be our deliverer. If we could do it on our own accord, we wouldn't need him to be our strong tower. If we could do it on our own accord, we wouldn't need him to be a mighty fortress. If we could do it on our own, then we wouldn't need him, amen, to be our go-between, a mediator. God is saying, that's why Paul said, oh, wretched man that I am, who shall the... Notice what he's saying. There is deliverance. Look at your name and say, there is deliverance. There is deliverance. Amen. He said, who shall deliver me from this body of sin? Thank God for Jesus Christ. Ah, there is deliverance. Although the war is on, there is deliverance. I don't want to leave you hopeless thinking that you can't. Uh -uh, no, 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 no. He says, I thank God for Jesus Christ. Hell, hello. Thank you, oh God. Uh, yeah, so, so much so. Uh, see, that's why he talks about justice. A amen. He justifies us. Justify just simply means justice has been satisfied. Amen. Praise God. Where what we couldn't do, he came in and took our place the propitiation of our sins. He took our place. Someone said, I owed a debt I could not pay. He paid a price he did not owe. And I needed someone to wash my sins away. And I thank God for Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. Look, we're going to come back. We're going to come back. And I'm just, I'm just stopping for right now because some of you have already stopped. I'm going to do what you do. Thank you, Lord Jesus. This is what's needed in the church. This is what needed in the church. I was telling somebody the other day, because they say, you know, oh, I'm so glad people get excited. I said, that doesn't excite me. He said, why not? I said, no. 
incitement brings excitement. You, you get that incitement. See? Yeah, I can let the music bring excitement about me. But my excitement comes when I know he dropped my charges. Now that's, ex that's <laughs> hello. If you were before the judge and you know that you killed somebody, And the judge, you know what's before you. You either gonna get life in imprisonment, or, or you gonna get fifty years or anything like that. And the judge says the charges are dropped. You think you're just gonna say, "Well, God, thank you, judge." When you know you were guilty, all the evidence point to you being guilty. And you don't know how you get, hello, I don't know how God didn't kill me graveyard dead some time ago. That's how bad all of us were. See, you thought I was going to say me. That's how all of us, we, we were all, amen, uh, uh, sinners saved by grace. We were all sinners. Uh, uh, and when you understand that, see, that incitement ought to bring some excitement, amen, praise the Lord, to know what he dropped the charges. Because I was guilty as charged. Let's see, we're standing. Uh, and we're going to talk about those four laws in our members. Four laws. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So I'm hoping you come back next week. I promise you, I'm going to talk about those four laws. They were right there in the scripture we read about it, but sometimes we never put it together. See, here it is. You can only combat that which you know, but what you don't know. My people are destroyed for what? Listen to what he said. My people are destroyed for what? Lack of knowledge. How many times have we read those scriptures and never realized there were four laws that's operating in us? <laughs> now I got you thinking, man. And this is good. I want to keep you warning and not waning. Listen. The war is on and you know what's going on. And I certainly want to open up the altar for anyone that would desire to come. Lord, I'm in this battle. God, I, I need you to give me the upper hand in this. It's not a squirmish. It's, it's a battle. It's a war, oh God. Yes, Lord. And the enemy is out to defeat and destroy me. But I need your divine intervention, Lord. Thank you. If you're here today, come. If you're here today, come. If you're here, come. Not that you in sin, but God, I need this thing worked out in me, God. I need this, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Just remember, God only reveal, heals what you're willing to reveal. God will only fight the battle that you give him. Thank you, oh God. Thank you, oh God. 